In this lesson, we're going to work with the diffuse material. The diffuse material defines how a 3D object looks. It gives it its color. So to follow along, start up Photoshop. Let's make a new document, File New. Take this one here. And let's use a preset to make a sphere. So go to the 3D panel, go to Mesh from Preset, go to Sphere, and click Create. I want to work with the material here, the sphere material. I can click on that directly, or I can click on this once. And then we have the sphere selected, then twice we have the material selected. And there is the diffuse material. By default, when you work with a mesh like this, you already have a texture file there. It is a transparent layer, and that's it. So when it's a transparent layer like this, you can add a color simply by clicking on this color swatch. Let's just make a color there like that. We can see what kind of colors we're going to make here. Just pick one that you like. You finally find one that works for you. You just click OK. Simple as that. But now I want to replace this color with a file, with a texture file. So I'm going to go over here and work on that file. Click on Edit Texture. We have this empty layer, this transparent layer. Let's put something in the layer and see what it does to our sphere. To do that, let's arrange the workspace a bit here. Go to Window, Arrange, Two Up Vertical. So you can see these guys side by side. As you work over here, you'll see your results over here when you just make this active. So let me close this down so you can see it. We're going to work on this side over here. Let's just add some color to it. So I'm going to grab the gradient tool here. I have a very colorful gradient. You can pick anything you want, but I want to make sure we can see what's going on here. So click OK. I'm going to drag it kind of an angle here to show you a little problem that you have with the seam. So I'll go like that. There you go. And we don't see it here yet, but when I click on this side, it's going to become active. And there's our work. How about that? Click on the selection tool, click on you, and rotate you around. And you can see how we did things there. There's the red on top. And we'll go down to the bottom here, rotate this way. And there's the orange on the bottom. But you can see this seam that came about because this side on the left does not line up with the side on the right. Let me just rotate it around. You can see what I mean. Pretty obvious. I'm going to give you some tips on how to deal with seams in an upcoming lesson. This one would be really difficult to make it work, just so you know. But if they're reasonably close, you can kind of fix it using a couple of tools. But for the time being, that's how that works. Now that we've done this, we can go back here and do some work on this side again. So I'm going to click over here, make it active. Let's add some text. Click on the Type tool. Type in something like sphere. If you want to add a little layer style, you can just double click over here and let's say we'll add a drop shadow to it. That's fine. Click OK. If you want to reposition it, click on the V and pull it around like that. You can see it against a lighter background. However you're working on this. Now that we've done that work, we can see our work over here by making this layer active. There it is down there. And there we go. We can also add, let's say, shapes. I'm going to go back over here, make this active, click on the shape tool here. Let's have a custom shape. Have the fleur de lis over here. Let's add a fleur de lis right over here, let's say. Kind of boring looking. We'll give that a little bit of a layer style too. Just double click over here. We'll give that a drop shadow, maybe a color overlay, something like that. Click OK. And we'll put that, let's say, below the text. Makes sense, right? Drag you up above like that. OK. Let's see how that shows up over here. Click over there. There it is. It shows up nicely. Have the selection tool and we'll rotate you around. Now that we've done all this work, we can replace this work with a different file. So I go back up here and click on this one more time to make the material active. Go over here and open up this and say, instead of edit the texture, let's replace it. When you replace it, you can replace it with a file. So I'm going to click on that. Let's track down a file. I want to go back to our working files folder, go to the NASA files, and let's say click on Earth. Oh, you can click on any one of these guys, but I'll double click on Earth. And there you go. And now this thing is now superfluous. I can close it down. It won't ask me to save it. It's gone. We don't need it anymore. And here's this new texture file, right like that. You'll notice that there is no seam. It's very slick. The folks at NASA really created a real nice image. When you open this thing up here, we'll click on it again to make the materials active and open up its texture. You'll see that the right edge here really lines up nicely with the left edge, so you really can't see a seam there. If you look real carefully, you might notice a little bit of a seam, but it's pretty good. I'll close that back down there. All right, that's how we work with that sphere. Spheres are kind of forgiving because you can place things pretty obviously. You pretty much know where something is going to go when you apply a texture to a sphere. It's not necessarily the case when you work with something else that might have multiple textures or might not be a sphere like this. It might not be somehow symmetrical. So let's make a new object. I'm going to turn the eyeball off for you, make a new layer. And let's use a mesh preset over here like that to make a wine bottle. Click on that, click Create. Now we have a wine bottle here. I'll click on it once to select the wine bottle. I'll click again. Now we've selected the label material, glass material, 
cork material. I want to work with the label material, so I'll click on that. Once again, we have a texture file already associated with it. Let's go open that up. It's going to be, again, a transparent layer. I want to put some text here, and I want to see how it works with the bottle. So let's go to Window, Arrange, all those guys lined up vertically like that. Let's work over here on the left-hand side and add some text in the Type tool. And I'll type, let's say, on the left-hand side like that, type Wine. And let's see what happens over here. Let me close down this panel so you can see it better. Click here, make it active. And here it's horizontal, and here it's vertical. So right off the bat, things may be a little confusing. Also notice that part of the W got cut off. So you know, how do you know where to position this to make sure it gets in the right place? I'll go back over here, move over a little bit like that, back here. Ah, well now it's pretty much in the right place. I could move it a little bit farther to the right like that. And now by hit or miss, by trial and error, we got the thing lined up pretty well. But there are better ways to do this, and I'm going to show you how to line things up with more accuracy in an upcoming lesson when we talk about working with wireframes and with checkerboards that have numbers on them. But for the time being, we're just kind of playing with this and seeing how it goes. Let's add an image file to this. So I'm going to go over here and select this, make sure it's active, and go File, Place. Go over to the Photo Spin files inside our Working Files folder. There we go. Folks at Photospin provided these images for us. Let's just open up the tropical beach or double click on it. It's going to place it here. We'll say, yep, we accept that. Let's put the text on top, right? You can give the text a drop shadow here, double clicking on it and opening up the layer styles here. And we now have a drop shadow. Now let's see what's going to happen with this image. I'll click over here to make it active. And all right, let's see what we have here. We have the palm tree on the left here. Rotate we'll around like that. See a little bit of this palm tree showing up here. And then there's a beach down there. How about the other side? It doesn't really get very high up on the palm tree, just a little bit up on the palm tree. And then we got this big empty space. But what's happening is that this area from here down to here is what's going to be in the label to fill it all the way around like that. And we see that we're kind of cutting things off right about from there to about here. So again, this is this kind of dilemma as to how to figure out where to put things. And I will explain this in an upcoming lesson. But for the time being, you can kind of do this sort of trial and error thing and see where things go. All right, let's just do one more thing. I want to work with an extrusion instead of a preset just to see how that works. Let's close this one down here, make a new layer. And we'll use the ellipse tool over here. Switch to the ellipse tool. And we'll draw the little ellipse here, make it a circle by holding on the shift key and space bar to position it in the center. But that's fine. And now let's convert this to a 3D object by extruding it. So I'll click on the 3D panel over there, 3D extrusion, create. And let's rotate you around, click on you and rotate it like so. I want to add, let's say, a label or something over here. So I click on that, and I've got that material selected. I'm going to go over here and say, let's replace this right off the bat here. Just click on replace. Now I'm going to put this aquarium on there, so double click on that. Now that we've replaced it, we need to edit it. So I'm going to close this one down. We don't need it anymore. I want to edit this. So I'm going to click on that and let's say edit the texture. There it is. Let's look at them both at the same time. Go to Window, Arrange, to up Vertical. Now you get a sense of what's going on here. I'll click on this. And it looks like it's upside down, right? Let's rotate you all the way around. Now it's maybe a little more logical. There's a seam there again. You go over here and go Control or Command minus a couple of times so you can see what's going on here. I'm seeing these guys on the right hand side right there. There we go. Look over here and rotate around that a bit. Go to this side and I see this pipe coming out. There we go. So we have the whole width here. That's fine. But you can see we're getting only a part of this thing. If we look down here, we can see we're only getting a very small part. It just goes down to this little area here and cuts off. So we're seeing basically from here to here and nothing down here. And maybe a little bit along the top is also missing. So you can see that even though this looks like a very simple thing that you can just wrap something around, it only takes part of this image, only the part like right about here, let's say the upper third or so is what's showing up over here. So that's how you work kind of generically with Diffuse. I'm going to show you how to have more specific placement of objects in Diffuse in my lesson on working with wireframes and checkerboards.